Hello and welcome to Apple A Day. This is part two of my Learning Apple Keynote series. This is Getting Started with Presentations. I'm going to be covering themes and we'll be creating our first presentation based on one of the built-in themes. Now a theme contains a series of individual slide templates called layouts. Some themes are strictly text-based, but others have photos and images. The great thing about the themes is they can be used as is, only replacing the placeholder text and the images. Or you can easily add new elements such as text, photos, company logos, video, etc. And there's even a feature called live video, which basically activates your webcam. And this can be very useful if you're streaming your presentation. Okay, so let's jump right in. When you launch Keynote, you're gonna start by clicking on the new document button. If you don't see this window, you can select new from the file menu to bring it up. This opens the choose a theme window. Now themes come in two sizes. By default, 16 by nine is selected, which is the standard widescreen format, but you can also switch to four by three and you can see the theme thumbnails change size. But for the purposes of this video, we'll just stick with the 16 by nine. On the left side, you can see a list of theme categories. By default, all themes is selected. And if I scroll down the thumbnail list, you can see that the category names match those in the category list. Minimal, editorial, etc. The dynamic themes are pretty cool because they have dynamic or animated backgrounds which can be modified with settings for color and animation speed. So if I click on a category, say minimal, all of the available minimal themes are displayed. Let's start with one of these. I'll select showroom. I can select it and press the create button on the bottom right or simply double click on the theme. When a keynote document is created, you always get a starting slide to work with. Over on the right side of the document window, this is where you can edit and change all of the slide properties. The format and animate tabs are specific to the selected slide and the document tab lets you make document wide changes such as switching themes. By the way, if you want to close this panel, you can do so simply by clicking on the currently selected tab again and the panel will close. So I'll click on format again and it closes. One more time and the panel reappears. So I'm gonna keep it simple today, so I won't be going over the format and animate tabs in great detail. But don't worry, I'll be doing that in an upcoming video. So let's change some text. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward to modify the placeholder text. Simply double click. So I'll just type in apple a day in the first text box. I'll double click on the second text box and type in learning keynote part two. So right now the format tab is showing me the options for the current text box. I'm going to deselect that text box by clicking on an empty area of the slide. And now you can see that the format panel changes to show slide properties. Each slide layout has three built-in text boxes that you can easily turn on and off. If you look over at the slide properties under the format tab, you can see the appearance section has three checkboxes, title, body, and slide number. By default, slide number is not turned on for this layout. If I turn it on, you'll see the slide number appear at the bottom center of the slide. And as you probably guessed, Unchecking title will hide the Apple a day text, which is the title text. And of course, unchecking body will hide the learning keynote text. I'll turn those both back on. So what if you wanted to change the slide layout? Well, that's actually super easy. On the very top of the slide properties, there's a slide layout dropdown menu. The current slide layout name is title as displayed here. Clicking on it will display the slide layout drop-down menu. A check mark is visible for the currently selected slide layout, and you can see the name of the layout under the thumbnails. This is the layout named title. So maybe I don't want the body text on the first slide, I just want the title. I could uncheck the body text box, or I could choose the title center slide layout, which has body text turned off by default. Also, the title is moved down slightly to be perfectly centered vertically and you can see that when I change the layout. Now what's great is we haven't actually lost that body text, it still exists. If I change back to the title layout, the text is still there. And if I go back to the title center layout, 
I can turn on the body checkbox to show that text. So Keynote has these built-in text boxes that it manages regardless of the slide layout. You can, of course, add additional text boxes, and I'll just click on the text icon on the top of the window to create a new text box. Keynote creates a new text box at the center of the window, so I'll just drag it up to the top so I can see it a little bit better. I'll type in hello, and I'll position this to where I want it. Note that when you drag an element around, it will snap to the center of the window, and you can see the vertical guideline appear when I get close. It acts like a magnet and snaps the dragged item into position. Okay, so what happens to this new text box when I change slide layouts? I'll do that right now. And you can see that the layout changes for everything but the new text box. Changing the slide layout has no effect on elements created manually. Let's try another slide layout. I'll pick title and bullets. You can see that the bullet text is actually still the body text, but formatted differently. A bullet point has been added, and the text is no longer centered. It's now left justified. Note that the hello text is still right where I positioned it. I no longer need that, so I'll just delete that right now. I'm going to change this slide layout back to title. And now I'm going to add a new slide. And at the top left of the window, there is an Add Slide button. This displays the same drop-down menu, which shows the thumbnails of all the available slide layouts. I'm going to pick Photo Vertical. I'll change the placeholder text for the title to Your Host, and the body text to John Martin's. And there's also a placeholder image. Unlike the placeholder text, this image actually exists on the slide. And you can see that in the thumbnail over on the left. So to change the image, simply click on the icon on the bottom right of the image, or select the image, and then go to the Image tab in the Format panel, and click on the Replace button. Then just select the image file you want to replace it with. I'll just pick this really old headshot of myself. Okay, so if you change layouts now, this image will be remembered as long as you switch to a layout that also contains an image. The image selected will remain intact. But if I switch to a text-only layout, the image will be lost. As you can see, switching to the original title layout, then back to Photo Vertical, reverts the image back to the placeholder motorcycle. And the same logic applies to switching themes. I'm just going to put my headshot back in first. Now, if I go to the Document tab and click on Change Theme, I'll select Improv from the Craft section. And you can see that the text and the image remain intact. Also, if I switch over to Format, you'll notice that the slide layout is still on Photo Vertical. It retains that. So you can see that you have a lot of control over the look of your presentation, and the theme doesn't necessarily need to be decided when you create your slides. So I'm just going to add a few more slides randomly. I'm not going to bother populating the text. So quite often, when building a presentation, you'll need to rearrange the order of your slides. Keynote makes this incredibly easy. All you have to do is click and drag the thumbnail from the Navigator panel and move it around. The vertical line will tell you where the slide will move to when you let go of the mouse button. You can also group slides together using drag and drop. Now watch that vertical line indicating the drop position. If I drag over to the right slightly, that line indents to the right as well. And if I drop the slide there, it becomes grouped with the slide above it. And you can see this new disclosure triangle that appeared, which allows me to open or close the group. I'll add another slide to this group. One benefit of grouping slides is that you can close the group to make your presentation less cluttered and easier to work with. For instance, you could group a series of slides together that are all related. Another benefit is you can reposition the entire group as easily as you did with a single slide. I'll move this group to appear after the first slide. And if I open the group, you can see that all of the slides within the group have moved as well. Keynote allows you to have up to six levels of indentation for grouping. I'll drag one more slide onto this group, but also move slightly to the right. See how that placement line indents another level? 
I'll drop the slide here, and now I've created a group within a group. You can drag groups around to be in and out of other groups. Keynote has made this very, very intuitive. Note that the grouping does not affect the slide playback. Each slide in the group is played back normally. You can drag groups around to be in and out of other groups. However, you can only drag the entire group if the group disclosure triangle is closed, or if you select all of the slides belonging to the group. So I'll close this group and then move it somewhere else. And you can see that the group is still intact. I'll put it back where it was and I'll click on the disclosure triangle to open up the group. And I'll make sure that I select all of the slides in the group first. I'll move it and reposition it. And again, you can see that it moves just fine. I'll reset this one more time. Now with the group open, I'll only select the first slide, which you would think would move the entire group, but it does not. It breaks the slide away from the group. Uh, just a side note, you can duplicate a slide by holding down the option key and dragging it. A copy of the slide is created. Another way to do it is just right click on a slide and select the duplicate option from the menu. Now, one thing to consider for groups, when you change the view to light table using this drop down menu on the top left, you won't be able to see the grouping and it's easy to drag a slide out of a group without realizing it. I'll do that right now and drag slide four to the end of the presentation. If I go back to the navigator panel, you can see that that slide has been removed from the group and it is now at the end. So it's just something to be aware of. Changing the view to outline also does not display the groups. I'll do that quickly right now so you can see. Okay, I'll switch back to the navigator panel. Also, I'm going to move the your host slide to be right after the initial slide. So the last thing I'm gonna cover in this episode is the playback of your slideshow. You should make sure that the first slide you want to appear in your slideshow is selected. So I'll select slide one. Then simply press the play button on the top of the window. If you're in a single monitor setup, you'll simply see the selected slide appear in full screen mode. To move to the next slide, simply click on the left mouse button or any of these keyboard keys, the spacebar, return, right arrow, or down arrow. To go back to the previous slide, click on the right mouse button or any of these keyboard keys, delete, left arrow, or up arrow. To stop playing your presentation, press the escape key. That's it. That's how simple it is to play your presentation and navigate through it. I'll be covering the dual monitor setup and more advanced playback features in another video. Okay, so that's it for getting started with presentations. This was part two of learning Keynote. Make sure to come back for part three, working with text. In that video, I'll be showing you how to format text, use text styles and presets, and incorporate lists and bullets effectively. Thanks as always for watching. I'm John Martins. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.